Hello and welcome to Midweek Connection on November 30th, 2022. One day till December already. How fast every year seems to go by. Well, we're here at First Presbyterian Church. My name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Natalie. Soon to be Pastor Natalie. So maybe we'll do that next week, right? When we get commissioned. That'll be <laughs> All great. Right. It'll good. be good. It'll be good. And we're going to do today what we normally do. Read our daily lectionary texts. Talk about it. Say a prayer. And trust that the Lord is going to speak through his word. So let me open us in a word of prayer today. Gracious Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the many blessings that you have provided. We thank you for a good word that you have already given us today, a chance for us to be in your presence and a chance to discuss uh, what you have given to us. Lord, I pray that what we say today would be glorifying to you and useful for building up the community of faith. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're starting today with Psalm 50. The Mighty One, God, the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and does not keep silence. Before him is a devouring fire and a mighty tempest all around him. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me, my faithful ones, who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your folds, for every wild animal of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the air, and all that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world and all that is in it is mine. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and pay your vows to the Most High. Call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. But to the wicked, God says, What right have you to recite my statutes or take my covenant on your lips? For you hate discipline and you cast my words behind you. You make friends with a thief when you see one, and you keep company with adulterers. You give your mouth free rein for evil, and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your kin. You slander your own mother's child. These things you have done, and I have been silent. You thought that I was just like yourself. But now I rebuke you and lay the charge before you. Mark this then, you who forget God, or I will tear you apart and there will be no one to deliver. Those who bring thanksgiving as their sacrifice honor me. To those who go the right way, I will show the salvation of God. Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11. Praise the Lord, how good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of the runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. Our Old Testament text today comes from Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills, all the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, 
neither shall they learn war anymore. And from the New Testament, we'll read 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 13 through 20. We also constantly give thanks to God for this, that when you received the word of God that you heard from us, you accepted it, not as a human word, but as what it really is, God's word, which is also at work in, your, in you believers. For you, brothers and sisters, became imitators of the churches of God in Christ Jesus that are in Judea. For you suffered the same things from your own compatriots as they did from the Jews, who killed both the Lord Jesus and the prophets, and drove us out. They displease God and oppose everyone by hindering us from speaking to the Gentiles so that they may be saved. Thus, they have constantly been filling up the measure of their sins, but God's wrath has overtaken them at last. As for us, brothers and sisters, when for a short time we were made orphans by being separated from you in person, not in heart, we longed with great eagerness to see you face to face. For we wanted to come to you. Certainly I, Paul, wanted to again and again, but Satan blocked our way. For what is our hope, our joy, our crown of boasting before our Lord Jesus at his coming? Is it not you? Yes, you are our glory and joy. Our gospel text today is Luke chapter 20, verses 19 through 26. When the scribes and chief priests realized that Jesus had told this parable against them, they wanted to lay hands on him at that very hour, but they feared the people. So they watched him and sent spies who pretended to be honest in order to trap him by what he said so as to hand him over to the jurisdiction and authority of the governor. So they asked him, Teacher, we know that you are right in what you say and teach, and you show deference to no one, but teach the way of God in accordance with truth. Is it lawful for us to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus perceived their craftiness and said to them, Show me a denarius, whose head and whose title does it bear? They said, The emperor's. Jesus said to them, then give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. And they were not able in the presence of the people to trap him by what he said, and being amazed by his answer, they became silent. And back to our psalm, Psalm 53. Fools say in their hearts, there is no God. They are corrupt. They commit abominable acts. There is no one who does good. God looks down from heaven on humankind to see if there are any who are wise, who seek after God. They have all fallen away. They are all alike, perverse. There is no one who does good. No, not one. Have they knowledge those evil do have they no knowledge, those evildoers, who eat up my people as they eat bread and do not call upon God? There they shall be in great terror, in terror such as has not been. For God will scatter the bones of the ungodly. They will be put to shame, for God has rejected them. Oh, that deliverance that Israel would come from Zion. When God restores the fortunes of his people, Jacob will rejoice. Israel will be glad. And our final song today is Psalm 17. Hear a just cause, O Lord. Attend to my cry. Give ear to my prayer from lips free of deceit. From you let my vindication come, let your eyes see the right. If you try my heart, if you visit me by night, if you test me, you will find no wickedness in me. My mouth does not transgress. As for what others do, by the word of your lips I have avoided the ways of the violent. My steps have held fast to your paths, my feet have not slipped. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me, hear my words. Wondrously show your steadfast love, O Savior of those who seek refuge from their adversaries at your right hand. Guard me as the apple of the eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings from the wicked who despoil me, my deadly enemies who surround me. They close their hearts to pity. With their mouths they speak arrogantly. They track me down. Now they surround me. They set their eyes to cast me to the ground. They are like a lion eager to tear, like a young lion lurking in ambush. Rise up, O Lord, confront them, overthrow them. 
By your sword, deliver my life from the wicked, from mortals, by your hand, O Lord, from mortals whose portion in life is in this world. May their bellies be filled with what you have stored up for them. May their children have more than enough. May they leave something over to their little ones. As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. When I awake, I shall be satisfied, beholding your likeness. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Interesting Psalms today. Very interesting Psalms today. Psalm 17 that we just read, 53, 50. Uh, 147 is what we usually read, but in context with right. the other ones, um, that Psalm 50 where it just really starts the uh, that whole idea of God, uh, God owns everything already. Right. And, and so the idea that people were thinking that they were bringing something in order to serve that he needed, God, that he right. needed he it. He needed that. You know, I don't right. eat the meat of bulls. I don't drink the blood or eat the flesh of bulls. I don't drink the blood. Yeah. Um, it wasn't a need that that was being fulfilled by right. offering those sacrifices. He's bigger than that. Right. And so that whole idea that it was uh, uh, that they had the form of religion without actually having hearts transformed by that relationship. And so that whole idea of uh, here's what God requires, you know, um, uh, uh, don't uh, don't despise the discipline, you know, uh, those kind of things. But it's just a really, um, really difficult passage talking about that very thing, the people who uh, have the appearance of religion uh, really without having that right relationship with God. Right. And God sees that. I mm -hmm. mean, he, you know, and that's the, the, the right, that Psalm 53, you know, um, fools. <laughs> and uh, is there anyone that does good? He looks at humankind. He's looking for the wise and people will fall away. And there are people that are ungodly. And there are people, they will face um, the wrath and um, the judgment. And so, um, and with that, and I think that's even when we get into the passages today, that Isaiah passage that you read, and it's talking about the position of um, the, I don't remember the, you've got it open right there, right. the... Um, the mount, you know, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the highest of mountains. It shall be raised above the hills, and that's that recognition that God is elevated. We are not right. God, and, and at we are some not. point, and at some point, people will come back to Him. Like right? all right. of the nations will come. Uh, God will be judging between the nations, and so it's it's uh, how much we try to outrank each other all the time <laughs> right. you know it's like oh I've offered a better sacrifice than you or I've got a higher standing or whatever it might happen to be but at some point we all come before the singular judge of the nations um, and then there's that, that hope in there that the swords are beating, uh, beaten into plowshares and their spears and their pruning hooks right. that, that ultimately that God is going to um, establish true peace right. and reconciliation between the people yeah um, you know, and it's just those, those psalms in relation to uh, the Luke passage where, um, you know, earlier in Luke, uh, there's the, the Jesus' authority is being questioned, and it's being questioned by the chief priests and the scribes, these people, again, who had the outward uh, perception right. of, of religious obedience, but it was just, it was an outward perception. And, and again, um, I'm, I regularly get confronted by, by one, one particular person who says, but remember, these guys were doing the best that they could do. And they were trying to adhere to the law. And, and they were uh, uh, following the letter to the closest that they could. Um, and so not wanting to disparage all of their actions, but again, it gets back to this heart matter. Right. And, and so there's this perception, you know, verse 19 of, of Luke 20, when the scribes and the chief priests realized that Jesus had told this parable against them, and he was talking about the parable of the wicked tenants, um, about how uh, that, you know, the, the landowner had the, the vineyard and was expecting to get the produce of it, and then they killed the prophets, and then they killed, and ultimately God sends his own son, but they reject that. 
I, I really kind of thought that that was going to be our Isaiah passage because Isaiah yeah. talks about that <laughs> that, uh, that vineyard passage as well. Right. Um, and so again, you have these people that can perceive in their own hearts that these words of judgment are coming, but rather than repenting, they get pardoned, it seems, and continue to come against them. Right. And the thing about it is it becomes, the law becomes, it's like they're submitting to the law and they are following the law to the point that they lose sight of the relation mm -hmm. and they lose sight of, of people. Um, they lose sight of Jesus. I mean, they are the religious leaders and yet the whole thing that you're worshiping is standing right in front of you and you don't even see it because you're so worried about what well, the law says. Right. And, um, you know, and I think that we see that throughout several of the, the parables, you know, mm -hmm. it, it becomes that well, they're trying to follow this law to the point that, that the people don't matter. Just a, a couple of weeks ago, we read the, the parable the or the, when Jesus healed on the Sabbath right. and they're so, I mean, they're angry about this. Like, how could he do this? He broke the law, but it's, the law is there and God gave us the law and there's a value in that, but the true value is in is in the heart and the heart that we have for Christ and the heart that we have for people. And right. following some law to the letter of the law, you can do that without having that heart for people and having that heart for Jesus. Right. And when you lose sight of Jesus right in front of you, when you lose sight of the needs and the compassion that you can have for people, then I just don't think we're doing it right. Mm. And so, um, yeah, uh, yeah I think that fits right in with this, even Jesus' response to the question about paying taxes. And I know it's a real familiar passage, and you guys have heard it before, but that whole idea of you know, whose, whose image is on this coin, right. well, it's like, well, it's the image of the emperor. And that's great. Okay, well, then give to the emperor what is the emperor's. It's his coin. Give it to him. Right. That's just kind of the way it is. But then, then the question is, but give to God those things that are God's. And if we want to talk about image, again, it goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 1, that God created humans, male and female, in the image of God. Right. And so if we are uh, distracted by, you know, and again, like God created us in a material universe, but it is full of spiritual reality. Right. And so... All of the things that have been given are all meant to be used for God's glory. And right. so it's not that material things in and of themselves are bad. Right. But what is most important, it's the people that are created in God's image. Right. And so if we are more concerned for money than we are for people, if we're more concerned for image than we are for our fellow humans, if we're more concerned about our own status as opposed to how can we be in better community and relationship with one another. And so that whole idea, give to the emperor what is the emperor's, but what do we need to give God? Uh, jumping back to Psalm 50, God owns all of the beasts, uh, the cattle on a thousand hills. He doesn't want animal sacrifice. He wants human relationship. He right. wants us to be there. What do we give to God? Well, we give ourselves. Give the coin to the emperor. Give yourself to God. Right. And that, I think, goes into this Thessalonians passage as far as this recognition. You know, he says, um, let's see here, um, when you received the word of God that you heard from us, you accepted it not as human word, but mm. as what it really is. God's word, um, which is at work in you. And so that, I think, goes along with that recognition that um, it gives God that status of, of who he is. And yes, we were created in his image and we are called to be transformed, to be more like Jesus, that we will never be on that same level. We're not God. He is set above us. And but with that, um, there's that, like I said, there's that recognition of, of his power and his authority there. Um, I had a thought and I feel like I just lost it. Um, well, even how, that, but, even how that passage ends, 
um, you know, where where Paul is is boasting in the people that he has relationship with. You know, they've right. accepted Christ. That he's not pursuing a he's not pursuing a gold crown to wear on his head. He's pursuing people to be in relationship with Jesus Christ and Himself right. for eternity. Things that will last forever. And I think that um, yeah, I don't know. Well, if that's and that's, where that's you were gonna, going well, that's that. yeah. Well, and that's what I was going to say. Okay, so as as we recognize God's role and and our role created as in His image and as. We don't have to attain status. We don't have to, back to the the sacrifices, we don't have to sacrifice something good enough. We don't have to, we are what he, like you said, we are what he is after. And that relationship is what um, he is after. And, and with that, um, you know, I think that in that relationship, that recognition of our purpose and, and what it is that God has given to us mm. and the good things that he has given to us. And like you said, that doesn't mean that material things are bad, but that we use those for the betterment. Right. Um, like the, 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 so, the dignity of being a human should be enough. Like we're created right. in God's image. What, right. what more are you looking for? You know, you're, you're a queen, right? You know, you are in God's image. You are a, a ruler over over creation in, 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 the, in the gifts and capacities that God's given you to do that. And uh, having a relationship with God, um, shouldn't that just be enough? And how often we see relationships broken and uh, threatened or destroyed by, uh, by greed or envy and all of the different things that break down community. Um, um, that Luke passage, you know, trying to, you know, jostle for the, our own power, our own authority, our own position. Right. Um, trying to, to elevate ourselves somehow, um, whether that is job or money or whatever it is, just that jostling for position and that relationships are collateral damage. Right. Then how Psalm 17 just seems to be that that cry against the the deceit and the broken relationships you know it's just um, you know here's here's David crying out let let vindication come um, he he does put his own heart out there before the Lord it's just you know try my heart you know visit me at night it's going to be okay but we know in other passages that David is not 100 percent you know uh, Saul's sins you know these right. he's got them there. But the whole problem with the the arrogant um, and the deceitful and the ones that keep coming up, um, there's there's some pretty harsh words there at the end. It's like you know, give them give them by your hand, Lord, what they deserve. You know, let their bellies be full of what you stored up. Let them have enough for their children and leftovers. And you're just like, <laughs> dang, David. It's just like harsh harsh right. words. Do we not all feel that sometimes though, when we have when we sense that we've been wronged? Whether we, you know, there is injustice in the world and there is an oppression in the world, and I would, I would say I probably, you know, you know what I'm saying. It's just like, you know, okay, I've got problems, right? But minuscule compared to true suffering and right. true oppression from around the world, and how easy it is for my heart to go straight to Psalm 17, and and the, you know, oh, call down judgment or vengeance upon those people that have wronged me. And it's just like, right. come on, Joel, it's like, get it together. Have it's we just really like, really been wrong? Have we really been wronged? One, two, even if we had, you know, come on, Joel, just get over it. Was and it, yeah. Was it really that bad? And I don't think I could uh, satisfy those same requirements that David had there about, you know, wickedness is far from me or my mouth does not transgress. Well, God, I still have my problems, you right. know. Um, so, so maybe even in that, recognizing that we are all humans, we are all in the same condition, we know that everybody struggles with the same temptations, the same, uh, uh, you know, I guess, inclination of our sinful hearts to do these things. And it's just like, well, those of us who are really attempting to follow more closely, well, that's by God's grace. Right. It's not because I'm special or super or suddenly I've achieved some saint-like status, but just recognizing that even people who struggle with these things that David would, you know, uh, chastise them for, ask right. judgment for, it's like, you know what, how much more grace can we give? Right. How can we, yeah, how can we work on restoring relationships, reconciliation? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, don't be like the scribes and the Pharisees, right? You know, if a parable is told against you, just repent. Just repent. Right. Yep. Yep, Lord, I did that. Thank you for loving me. <laughs> Thank you for right. forgiving me. I'm in that same boat with everybody else. Mm. We all are. We all are. <laughs> we all are. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Well, okay, well, that was good. I, yeah. I, yeah, I liked it. It's uh, fun stuff. Um, I do really encourage every every one of you to continue with your daily lectionary reading. Um, with you know, we're in the Advent season, and so a lot of the stuff is going to have some um, uh, messianic prophecies. And Isaiah is always an interesting uh, prophecy to read. Uh, but just if you have any questions or comments or concerns, call up to the church, and we'll be happy to listen to you and pray with you and see what we can do together. But. Thank you, Natalie, for uh, coming today and working on this. Happy to do it. Uh, would you like to close us in prayer? I would love to. Great. Gracious Lord, we thank you for your words to us today. And I pray that we are challenged by these words and that we hear them and we take them to heart. I pray that we see Jesus. We see you. We, um, we look to you. I pray that we see the people around us and that as we uh, do community and do relationships that we could um, treat people in the way that Jesus demonstrated um, while um, he spent time here on earth, that we could love one another better and love you better. And um, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, y'all have a great day. Bye.